All right, so this is where I left it off last time. Right, just hopping in there. Um, typically, in this case, we're kind of working backwards as to what we're having this look like. So you don't know what the end result is going to look like. I have in my mind what I want it to look like. Um, but typically, you would go through and you would actually draw out, here's what I want the end to look like. And then you can work your way backwards to get to the beginning of how everything's going to animate. Um, so a couple things that I want to happen here. Um, I want to change, um, well, number one, I want to have this box be more than just a flat box. I want to have some thickness to it. So if I go down to my shape layer and I add a um, colored stroke, right now it does have a regular stroke, and I'm just going to pick this weird blue for now. Okay, so there it is. Um, notice on here the shape of it. Do you see anything like weird about that? Right, it's bigger on the top and bottom. Now why would that be? Not the mask. Something else. Nope, it's how I scaled it. Okay, so when I scaled this originally, where did I, you probably don't remember where I scaled it from, because I don't remember where I scaled it from. I assume I grabbed this and I hit the S key and I scaled it from there, I did not. So where did you come from then? Um, typically, if I scaled it from here, 13, 3, 34, 6, yeah. Typically, if I scale it from this area, that's where it would do it, but it did not do that. Make sure I'm on the right shape. That's the shape. That's the shape. Hmm. Uh, let's get rid of these corners. Let's go like this. Never mind, I thought that was that. All right, well, I'll look at that later. It's not a huge deal uh, because I'm going to change it anyway, but just so you can see. Um, something to pay attention to, obviously, is that I don't want that to be like that because that looks weird. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, two things. One, I don't like how that looks, right, like that. Um, also, I don't like how the letter S is in front of that stroke. I want the letter S to feel like it's like sandwiched between the stroke and the box so they feel like two separate elements. The only way for me to do that is to actually have two separate elements. One will be on top of my box, one will be under, or on top of the S, one will be below the S. So I'm going to, um, that's my streak, I don't want that. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna take the stroke off, so I'm just gonna go to zero. I'm gonna get rid of the color. I'm going to duplicate this. Duplicate that, there we go, and bring it above my letter S. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just give it the stroke. So I'm gonna take the fill off and just put the stroke on there. It's so weird how it's like that. Um, okay, uh, and then I can cut it. So I only need this to be here, right? At, um, no, I don't. I need that to animate. There we go. So now it animates, boom. And now as the letter S comes in, there we go. As the letter S comes in, you see how it comes in behind that square. Okay, and then even when it goes up here, it's still inside that box. So it still feels like, in the sense, that that box is actually a container, okay? So that's the idea with doing it that way. Now I had to move it up one, because remember my letter S, um, that shape is being used with a alpha track mat. So that's why it was cut out. So I had to make sure that that new shape, my stroke, which I'm gonna rename stroke, um, is above these two, because these two are what make the letter S be cut out. When I put it down here, it was basically using the new shape, this um, stroke, as my track mat. All right, so there's that guy. All right, so same thing. Now my streaks also need to come up because now my streaks are behind the stroke, and that looks weird. So I'm gonna pull these up. Now they're on top. Okay. So now what I wanna do is I wanna fill this box with something. I just want to change the color of the background. That's all I'm going to do there. 
Um, so I'm going to go to my shape layer, or where the shape layer is at, and I'm just going to click off of things and just draw a, a new solid. And on this new solid, I'm going to draw a mask around my stuff here. Come on. Click off. Click the mask. <coughs> Sometimes After Effects does not want to play nice when it wants to resize things. There we go. Uh, so now I have my mask shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this mask filling up the box. Now when I started to draw this shape here, and I'm going to have to constantly jump back and forth from the size of this, um, and put it at the top. So I want to move this down here. I'm going to call this my filler. And I'm going to animate that mask. Okay, So I'm going to leave it filled up like this. I'm going to hit M for mask, and I know that at the end I want it to look like that, so it'll be you know at like that point. So I'm going to go into my mask here, and I'm just going to add a couple points. Okay, and if I just pull them down, it just they're square, so I'm going to hold down Alt and do that. Pull this one down, hold down Alt and do that. Hold down Alt and do this. So this will give it kind of like a wavy kind of look to it. Okay. So at the very end, this will be all filled up. I can change the color later. I'm just going to leave it that ugly color for now. So now I'm going to go to the beginning of where I want it to start. Maybe right about there. And then I'll pull these points down. So I may have to click off and then click back on the path. I pull this all the way down here. Okay, so now I get this. Okay, now as that moves up, <coughs> um, it's just kind of going straight up. So I may want to, in the middle of this, click off of it again. And I'm using the control key to click off so that I can then just click on the point. And I'm just going to grab that and drag it up. And I'm going to go up a little bit more. And then maybe I pull this part down, and then I pull this part up. So I'm giving it kind of like a wavy kind of look. So that it feels like there's a little bit more motion to it. Let me make that bigger. Okay. So that's working. It's just going way too quick. So now I can just spread these keyframes out a little bit. Right, should be good like that. We'll see. There we go. Okay. Now I can do an effect on this. If I go to distort, uh, there's a whole bunch of things inside here that maybe I could play with and tweak and possibly use. Uh, one of them is a wave warp. So if I go to wave warp, look at what it does. I'm going to hit the FX off and then turn it back on. It's going to basically distort what my mask looks like already. Okay, so instead of it being just like that blobby shape that I put there, this wave warp will add another level to it. And if you watch the bottom, see how it's moving? So not only does it distort it, but it also is animated. So what's cool about that is that I could take this wave speed and put it up to, let's say, 3. Um, I can take my wave width and put that down to 20. And now I have a lot more... Um, waves inside here. Uh, I don't need pinning. I'll put that to high quality. So now watch as this comes up. It feels more like it's filling it up because of how it is. I think the wave height is still too high. Maybe that needs to be like five. Maybe it's five. Okay. So as basically my basic animation was just the waves kind of coming up. This is going to add some motion to it, so it actually feels like there's water kind of filling up inside this. Uh, so let's look at just that. So I hit B. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now once I get it here, 
um, obviously I need to then cut it out, right? So I need to make sure that that shape is not sticking outside the box. It still needs to be inside that square. <clears throat> so what I can do is if I go back to my shape layer here or shape layer there, I can make, again, another mask. Now, what is kind of sucky is always creating these masks. It can cause some, um, I don't know, basically we're duplicating layers and duplicating layers and it's using the same purpose. So another thing I can try is under mask, I can say, or not sorry, not under, under channel, I can say set mask. And what this does, is instead of always having to have the layer above it and then using that track map button, I can say, just use this layer. Wherever that layer is, that's your transparency. Okay, so it automatically just points to it. So I can say, take map from shape layer one. And look at how it automatically just pulled it out. It automatically just cut it. So I don't have to duplicate that layer every single time I want to cut something out and maintain it in there. I can just say, just use this. So now if we watch, it's still stuck inside that container. We just don't have the extra layer above it. Okay, so it's going to help us keep our area a bit cleaner. Now to make this feel a little bit better, um, I definitely need to pick some better colors. Oh God, it's getting ugly. There, that was cool. I need to go to my stroke here. Not there. And I'm just gonna eye drop this color and then go with that. And then I'm gonna go to my letter S and not have that look so ugly. better color combination. Okay, so now we have this. Boink. Sweet. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to add something to this to give it more of an, uh, an effect that it is actually like filling up, right? So remember our circle blips that we have, these guys, I'm gonna make a little bubble circle blip. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna to go to my projects here. I'm gonna organize my comps. I think three and two are just nothing. Yes, so three and two can go bye-bye. Uh, one is my final comp, so I should make that my... And pre-comp is this. I can get rid of that too. And drop this inside there, okay. So inside of here, I have my circle blip. I'm gonna drag my circle blip to this new comp button. Okay, you can see the icon. Uh, where'd I move to? Yeah. So you can see the icon here, same icon as there. So if I drag this to here, it basically just creates a composition the exact size of that and fits it perfectly. So there is my blip. Bleep. Okay, so now what I can do is just kind of scale this down. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And duplicate it. Duplicate it, there we go. I'm gonna offset these some. And then I'm gonna change their scales as well. Okay, so now that feels like little bubbles, like watery kind of bubbles. Okay, so I can rename this one to water blips. bubbles. Now I go back to my final comp. I grab my water bubbles. I drop them on top of all the stuff. Um, this composition is really long compared to what I actually need. So I'm going to jump back to water bubbles, go to where this is done, hit N, <clears throat> trim my comp. There we go. Now I go back to my final comp and this is exactly how long it is. So I just move this to where those water bubbles are happening. They're happening here. Huge. Scale it down some. Ten percent. Uh, Twenty-five percent. There we go. And I'm gonna shrink this in too. My water bubbles actually don't start until about there. So I'm gonna trim this again. All right. So now I'm just gonna position it where I have water coming up. 
there is a good spot. Duplicate this again. Move it, let's say, up here. And I'll also rotate it so that it doesn't look like they're all exactly the same. And obviously offset it some. Okay. So now let's take a look. So now we've used two blips in this thing. We've used the streaks, right? And we've used that. So now what I want to do is not touch that. Um, just finish this piece up. Um, so the last things that I need for this is I need my name to come out, and then I need my assignment number and my assignment name to come out too. Okay. So that's where I'm going to use some of this other stuff. So I'm going to go. start organizing some of this stuff all right so let's start here okay there um, so all of this is cool like I'm happy with the way all of that looks I'm not gonna have to touch any of that stuff at the moment okay so I'm gonna do two things one I'm gonna lock everything Oops, not that. lock everything the other thing I'm gonna do is hit shy guy so shy guy is this thing right here and if I turn shy guy on and then I click on this little shy guy there what it does is it hides the layers. So now I don't have to see them. If I have a thousand layers and I want to not see a thousand layers, I hide or shy away the ones that I don't need and I can focus on the ones that I do. So now I'm just gonna add in my type. You'll see it adds a new layer there. Sean Sarcona, automatically picked my correct font. I want this to be much, much smaller. That looks good. Yep, that looks good. Okay. Um, now I need to animate this coming out. So I'm just going to have it pull out from the side here. So it's just going to go bloop like that. Okay. So I'm going to pull it in where it's at there. This is the marker. That's where the other ones ended. I can rewind just to verify. Like there's the water. Um, I hit my P key, I animate the position, I come up a little bit, and I animate that just coming out. Okay. Um, let me do my easy ease. There we go, that's good. Um, and then I need to lock this off right so I need to have this masked out I don't have a mask for this area so I'm just gonna draw one let me get rid of the stroke no stroke I want to make sure there's a fill if there's no fill and there's no stroke there's not really a shape there to use as a mask perfect so now I can just use because I'm using it for just for the one piece I can just use this as a track map Okay, and I'm going to use it as an inverted so that it's opposite. So that wherever the mask is, that's what's going to go opposite to it. Like, like that. Cool. All right, so now I need, need my assignments to come in. So I'm going to have them pop in right from the top here. So it'll say assignment one. And then from the bottom here, it'll say whatever that assignment is. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did. So I'm going to click my text number one make this much much smaller Oops. and if you do change your font uh, don't change it to the same kind of font right so if this is a serif font because it has these little things on it um, then don't pick another serif font or don't pick it if you pick a blocky font don't pick another blocky font so I could probably go with something like that because it's a little bit more scripty than the other one. And I'll make this, uh, there's no bold for poor Richard. Poor Richard. Right, I wouldn't want to do that. That's too close to the original one. Or that, or that is too close. That one looks good. Okay, and I think this one does have a bold. So 
that'll be assignment number one right here. And then I'll just duplicate this and scoot it straight down. And our assignment number one that we're going to do is page transitions. Okay. Make sure you spell things right. Make sure things are enough room to fit all your stuff on there. So maybe I'll take this down to 35. This one shouldn't get any bigger. Okay. Assignment one, we're not going to have assignment 574,000. So that should fit there all the time. So this is the important part, make sure everything's lined up. Cool. Um, then I can just animate these things going out. Um, if I want to make this a little bit more interesting than just boop, it pops up. It doesn't have to be more interesting than just boop, it pops up, uh, but you can. So on each piece of your text, remember on the regular shapes, you had the little arrow here and you could insert like the trim path and some other stuff, the wiggle, the randomizer, whatever. Um, here you can actually animate position. And we'll get more into this later, but just so you can see it, um, this is going to um, allow us to move each piece separately. So instead of everything going up at once, I can animate each letter coming up individually. So I go to where it says position and I go to the Y direction and I move it down. Okay, so now it's below the line. So it has a start and an end, just like the trim path does. So all I have to do is animate the end or animate the start. Okay, and it'll take each one piece, each piece individually. So I'll do the same thing. So Sean Sarcona, uh, start. I'll go up a little bit. There we go. And what's cool is I can then take this range selector, apply it to assignment number one, and it'll give me the exact same animation. Okay, now wherever I pasted it, that's where my keyframes got pasted. So this one is basically animating after that. Um, so I'm gonna make my composition a bit longer just so you can see this and then I'll adjust things. Okay, I need to make my layers longer so that they're actually visible. Whoops. And I'll have to adjust the other one. There we go. Okay, so now on this range selector, uh, it's going from here to there. Good. I just have to make sure that I go to my position on here and animate the, or tell it that I want to animate the position. So I go to text, I go to animate, and I say position. Yeah, that one didn't take the whole thing. Oh. I clicked on range selector, I need to click on the animator and copy that and then paste it. There we go. So now that one does it, this one does it. Okay. So now I need to just take that animate one and not have it go up because I want that one to go down and just change the position here to move it above it. There we go. So I rewind a little bit, move it above it. And now when it animates, it comes down. Okay. Right. And I'm gonna cut these. These things are not even on the screen until right there. So I'm just gonna bring this in right here. And then page transitions, I'm gonna do the same thing. Oops, that was page transitions. Good, and that comes in, okay. And then assignment one, right there. Okay, okay. All right, so now I just need to make the uh, same little shapes. So with this one, I can actually just make a box. Make sure I have everything selected, make a box. And then I'm going to Alpha mat that. There it goes. Okay, 
And then I can duplicate this and then bring it down to assignment one and do the same thing. Now the reason that I can't do the um, set mat, okay, before I showed the set mat one, I can't do that on this because I'm hiding the box, okay? Um, in order for that set mat thing to work, um, we have to have a visible layer. So if I drew that white box and I said set mat, it would work, but then my box has to be there. That white box has to be visible. When I hit the, the uh, eyeball to hide it, it uh, would still show it. All right, so the only thing I have to fix here is my G on the page transitions is still like off. So I'm going to actually just scoot this one. I'm going to scoot the box down some. There we go. Now, because I scooted it down, when I go here, you can see the top of the letters right there. So then I need to take my page transition. I need to take the position and scoot it down a bit further, and then we'll go there. All right, and I'm going to line these up and just cut it. Cut it. And then the same thing with my Han Sarcona. I'm going to go to where I need the Han Sarcona in there. There. And I'm going to cut those. <clears throat> I'm going to unshine my other layers and just make sure they're stretched out. Because I increased the size of my comp, everything is gone at that point. So all of these need to be bigger. So I need to unlock them. And then I can grab all of these, stretch them out here. All right, so this will end up being about a five second animation. All right. So once I have this, the last thing that I do is I typically just want to go in and just tidy it up. Um, being on a black background, I'm going to hide this uh, gray, um, guy. Whatever. Uh, being on this black background looks kind of boring, so I want to have some other stuff that's inside this. Um, so if I just go to my bottom area here, I make a composition or a layer. this below everything and then I can duplicate that layer and then I can duplicate it again And I'm just going to give these different colors. And then I can come back and just start to tweak some more stuff. Maybe my page transition needs to be darker because now I can't see it. Let's darken that. Go to my uh, assignment. Darken that. All right, that worked. All right, definitely not the prettiest thing, but it's good enough. Sweet. Um, and then my final thing that I would do is I would go into my final comp, drag this to a new comp, and then this is where I would do some color correction, adjustment type things on top of it. So I'm gonna make a, a solid. I'm going to give it a dark color. I'm going to draw a circle mask on it, like that. <clears throat> I'm going to feather the mask big, so I open up the mask shape and feather it. And I'm also going to invert it. And then I'm also going to expand it. 
And then you see what I just made right there, just I made a little vignette. And then I do need to fix those streaks. Those are ugly, stupid streaks. Uh, that was on Final Count. And that was an effect where I colored this that color. So I'm just going to eye drop this blue. That's much better. Okay. And I'm just going to copy this tint and paste it on each of these. The better blue. Okay, so now here's my final final comp. All right, so there is my um, that's my title sequence or my yeah my title sequence. Uh, so then what we're gonna do with this, and I'm not gonna show this today. Uh, I'll show this next week. We're gonna use this for every single one of our assignments. So when we go into um, turning in the page transitions one. It's going to say assignment one page transitions, Sean Sarcona. And then a page transition will overtake this graphic. And then we'll see all the page transitions. When we do the next assignment, which is whatever it is, we'll have assignment two, whatever the assignment is. And then that page transition will come in, a page transition, not all of them. And then we'll see the next assignment. Okay? So we'll be creating page transitions for each one of our assignments to show um, how they go from one to the other. Cool. Uh, any questions on that, tidying it up, nerds?